asking for anything to say. This time, let's call this meeting to order. And Mr. Phillips, would you like to say the opening prayer? Thank you, Will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this special time of year with glad hearts, taking time to remember, be thankful for all the blessings that you have given us, giving us more than what we deserve. Ask that you take, we take this time to ask that you bless those uh, who wear the uniform and protect us here and abroad. Those who are overseas, please bring them home safe to their families. Ask that you look after and protect our first responders, those who protect us here at home. Also ask that you look after, bless and keep the veterans. This month of Veterans Day, that you bless and keep them as well, those who have already sacrificed. Also ask that you give this body, we pray for the <coughs> men on this court, that you give them wisdom and sermons to do what is right in your sight. Also pray at our state and federal officials that you also give them wisdom and discernment to do what is right in your sight. Ask that you forgive us of our sins. Ask that you forgive these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, our first guest, we've got Chad Kono from the Conservation District uh, uh, funding request. This is Revisiting what we spoke about back in the summer. Right up here at the podium, please. You all have a copy of the budget, correct? Yes. Yes. This would be the same budget you looked at. Uh, what was it back in June? Was it? Yeah. Everything's still the same. The only difference is we have depleted those reserves that uh, we were using in case we needed an office or we're no longer able to be at the uh, government office where we're at now. With all that being said, I want to explain to you all restricted funds. Um, the restricted funds are not eligible to be used for anything in our office other than the programs that they are designated for. So it looks like there's a considerable amount of money, but to run the office is what we use your money for that you give us each year. So if you're looking, the Cape Landowner Fund there of 59660 on the front page, that is restricted funds. That cannot be used for anything other than those applicants that come in and are granted those applications and that money. We try to supply 75 to 80 applicants every year depending on the amount of money we receive is how we break that down. Once again, that money cannot be used in our office. It cannot be used to pay secretary anything that is strictly for those people coming in asking for that money if any of that money is not used it is turned back into the state the next year we can file a request to get that money back but we spend it every year if possible we normally have enough applicants to do that if you look on over you can see the rest of the budget there you get back here on the back page you got your programs that's what was uh, spent in programs and then if you look at the CAPE, that was what was spent and then the uh, environmental grant. So we're still asking you all for $14,000 to make this office run through another year. Without receiving any funding at all, March the 31st, there will be no available money to run the office. Essentially, the doors will close. That money that has been given in the form of CAPE money and so forth will be distributed out, but the office will not be able to function. Also, there will be several programs cut out, which we've already cut some of those programs to get to the point we are today without the funding back earlier. This office, I guess it was three years ago we went to the area meeting, is that right? Our office looked like a donut hole. 
in the whole state because we weren't doing enough in this county and we weren't promoting soil conservation like it should have been done. In the last three years, we're no longer a donut hole. We're one of the better groups in the state at funding projects and making sure money is given and put out where it needs to be done to the citizens of Simpson County. We have knocked around that figure of a little over $600,000 is what this office brought in. Some of that was passed through money from state, federal, local. But the fact of the matter is that money was distributed out through our office to the citizens of Simpson and Franklin to do projects that they probably would not have done without some funding. Now, when you look at that, the 14,000 will run us to July. Our budget is due in April 1 of 2019. If not funded, if the doors close, we still have to file reports. The board will still be intact, but the office will not. We have to file a report. Is it every quarter, Michelle? No, retirement is every month. Retirement is every month. Or we're fined $1,000 a month for not reporting that report. Without a secretary, without the doors being open, that means one of the board members would have to file that report every month or take a $1,000 fine. Now, if we don't have any money, how are we going to take a $1,000 fine? If the office is closed, we're going to have to file the report for acts essentially doing nothing. That's state regulation. We have no control over that. The programs that we are doing that have been implemented in the last two years is the school program where we are actually in the schools doing more than the art and writing contest, which we've had schools want to do the art contest this year that are not eligible to compete, but the teachers want the kids to do it to know more about soil conservation and water quality and what this office does. We also will not be able to sponsor the Envirothon team, which is a high school team through the FFA that goes around and competes on different levels to have awareness of the environment and what water quality is and how it works. And also, we normally do a scholarship each year to a senior graduating who is going to go into the field of agriculture, soil conservation, forestry, whatever our office implements we grant that scholarship to a person we won't be able to do that scholarship is is that just a quick question i mean i know it's like the the cape landowner funds that come in are fifty nine thousand six hundred sixty, mm -hmm. and the cape expenses are one hundred eleven thousand six hundred forty nine. that's two years right yes okay that'll be two years we we run a year actually we run a year ahead i guess you'd say right or a year behind a year behind. You're behind. We handle two program years of money within one fiscal year. So that's and if, that's how you see those the differences. And also the Ag Awareness Breakfast this morning we sponsored. That will no longer be able to be sponsored. The Boo Fest on the Square, which has grown the last two years it's been out. We will also not be able to help sponsor the farm tour that's done every fall or summer, and also the uh, harvest dinner that's done. We've, we've always been a sponsor of that and a part of that, and that will be cut out. Um, so the $14,000 is what we need from you all to finish out through July to make our office stay open and work and do what it needs to do and to be a representative in the county to administer these funds that come in from the, from the state and local levels to get those distributed out. Now there is state money that comes, that comes through us. We don't necessarily, we administer that money, but there's another board that looks at the projects, makes sure they're done right on the state level. We just write the checks for them. That money shows up in here also. Chad, the 14,000 will take us through July of 2019. Mm -hmm. Have y'all discussed what are you looking at from 19 and 20 on or is it or, or what kind of money? The way the state and the federal government are doing it, what do you think the board's looking at? Right now, I think we would probably be about the same, but I mean, that's like any governmental office. You don't know where you're going to be because you don't know what the state level is going to be doing. 
We're, I mean, to be honest with you, we're worried about till July 31st. And then we know we're going to have to come back and worry about the next year. But our main concern is we've got Cape money to be distributed. And if there's nobody in office to distribute, I really don't know that it will be distributed. So you've got 75 applicants here in the county that is applied, qualified, but they're not going to get a check because we're not there to write it. So $111,000 may, may not get given out if, we're not, if, if our office is not open to do that job. What's the amount you're seeking today? $14,000. I'll make the motion that we grant them the request for $14,000. I'll suck. I got a question. I we were talking about this in the spring. I thought we were talking about $7,500. 7500 was what you all were able to give at the time, I believe, if you could have done it. But we have, the programs have changed since the spring. So we had to adjust for that. So yes, in the spring it probably was seventy five. Uh, they were they were, were always asked. They were 14. they were always asking for fourteen. And, asking for and I you all changed. I tried to put seventy five hundred okay. in the budget. That, that's, that's what, what it was. we were going to put seventy five hundred in. And yeah. Then, okay. Right. I knew that number was was coming. Right. The only question that I have, I mean, I'm, I'm not, is the. What's the per diem under personnel? Just with a with a salary of eighteen thousand and then a per diem of eleven seven. That just kind of seems a little bit. Per diem is what the board members receive. We're at a set figure every okay. month. The other would be the secretary. Okay. Salary. All right. Which I was just, I was just making sure that wasn't going to one individual. No, I would like to point out that there was two or three meetings that we did not take any per diem because we didn't feel comfortable taking the money because we were running short. So as a board, we decided not to be paid to make things run smoother or to get us through till we could be funded. Mm -hmm. I've got a motion and a second. Ready for a vote? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Martin Chandler? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Yes. Thank you all. Next, do we have any public comments? If not, we'll go on to the regular business. Need to review and approve the minutes from the November 5th that was a special call meeting. It's been, it says regularly scheduled meeting, but that was, it's okay. All the needs to reflect that. Was there a Not yet. Okay. Need a motion and a second. Probably needs to be as amended. As amended. <laughs> So I need, I got a motion to review and approve the minutes from the November 5th amended special called meeting. No, just the amendment with changing regular to special. To special called meeting. All right. Okay. And I've got a motion, I need a second. I'll, but we're not amending the minutes. No. no. We're just, no, just amending the minutes. There was an error on the right. agenda. Right, on this one. Okay, who is the second? Mr. Randolph. Blake Sparkley? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. Barney Chandler? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Jenny Spears? Yes. Next, we uh, got Mr. Hobson to review and approve his vehicle bids and miscellaneous items. Good. Gentlemen, we, uh, as you might remember the past history, we had $115,000 in our line item that came $70,000 from our drug fund. Y'all gave $45,000 for a total of $115,000. You gave me the option or the approval to explore vehicles and decide what I wanted to do with that. 
With that, I've looked at the state contract prices. I use state contract as a, you know that's a good deal because the state will allow you to just call and order a vehicle without going through a bidding process. We like to give local businesses a chance. So having state contract prices in front of me, I did put it out for bid. And it's going to, I'm going to have to do a little bit of explaining because uh, up front, I'm going to tell you I'm recommending we go with our local dealerships. We're looking at buying a truck, and we're looking at buying two uh, Dodge Chargers. And I need to explain why, because the prices, if we go with a different bid other than the low price, I need to have on the record why we did that. Uh, let's talk about the Chargers for a minute. We're getting two of those. I'm going to talk unit price, so we're not talking, you just double it, and I'll tell you what that is. But the original bid uh, from Hunt Ford was, or Hunt Dodge, $24,943. And uh, Gilly Hyde out of Bowling Green bid $24,393. That was a $550 difference. However, and this is why it's important to look at your bids real close. <coughs> The bid spe specified that it had to be an all-wheel drive vehicle. That's what we wanted. And Gilly Hyde did not bid an all-wheel drive vehicle. They bid a rear-wheel drive. And that option on the state, I don't know what they would have actually charged, but I can look at what the options on the state is and have a pretty good idea, was a $1,354 option. So if you factored that in, Hunt Ford's price actually beat theirs by about $800. What was the state contract price? State contract price was uh, twenty. Let's see, hold on. Twenty-five, one fifty-one. Okay. And I've got that figured out. Actually, Hunt Hunt Dodge, and excuse me, because I always call everything Hunt Ford, was uh, two hundred eight dollars cheaper than the state contract price. Eight hundred and four dollars, if that option's figured right the way I did it, uh, than the Gilly Hyde price. So. That'll save $1,608 over Gilly Hyde's price for two units. The uh, price on two units, if we need it for the record, is $49,886. So for the two Dodge Chargers, I recommend, uh, unless you have some type of objection that we get them from the local dealership, I'm stating the reason Gilly Hyde did not meet the specs on the bid sheet. And had they done it, the price wouldn't have wouldn't have reflected the same. Any questions on the two Dodge Chargers? What's the uh, amount of the striping and uh, lights and perfected? None of that's figured in. I, I've still got money left over in this that I'm going to use to do that. around five or six thousand dollars? Yeah, it usually at six thousand at a minimum. Okay. That, that's for a, uh, a fully done Dodge Charger. I've got about, when all is said and done, I'll have about 18500 left in here for lights and packages. And if you do that times four, because we're actually going to talk about four vehicles here, that's not enough to do them. However, uh, a couple of the vehicles aren't going to be fully striped or fully lighted, and I'll explain why. But these first two are road unit, Dodge Chargers, fully striped, and we'll, we'll be okay on that. Is there a reason why you're going back to the Chargers? I know, you, I know you've been buying pickups. Is there a reason why it has changed? Like well, it really had not changed. I, I like a little combination of both. It depends on what you're doing. We do some work up on 65, and the units handle nicer up there. Honestly, personally, I like the trucks better. But I do have some units that uh, prefer the chargers, and they're mainly patrol units. And OK. OK. Uh, now let's talk about the pickup truck, which is the third vehicle that we bid out. We only bid out three vehicles. Uh, Dodge, our local Dodge dealership, Hunt Dodge, came in at $27,554. And Gilly Hyde came in at $27,044. That was a $510 difference. However, uh, Gilly Hyde failed to add one of the options, which was the rear window defroster, which is not that big a thing. And again, I went to my state specs and go, okay, if they'd have put it in there like they're supposed to about what would it have ran. 
that's about a $195 option according to the state spec. So there's about a $319 difference in the two dealerships. Uh, for $319, I think we should get it locally because honestly, if I'm getting two vehicles and they save you $1,600, let's get the third there. Time is a big thing at the sheriff's office. When you look at what you pay me as sheriff or pay a deputy, if I have to run up the Bowling Green a couple, two or three times to mess with something because we're ordering these vehicles, you just want $3,300. So uh, they did on that, if you factor that in, it's a $300 difference, $319 difference. Both, again, beat the state contract. State contract price was uh, 27604 uh, I did have Hunt Dodge also give me a price for a chrome appearance package, which I'm going to include on that, which is $695. And I'm going to tell you why I'm using this truck as an experimental truck. I know y'all get tired of me saying it, but I try to look long term. What I'm going to do with this truck, I'm using it as a pure transportation truck. I've got a gentleman that full-time transports prisoners. This truck, my I've always heard that you can take something you get on state contract price and be able to flip it over three years and pretty well be able to pay for it, get within two or three thousand dollars of it. Well, guess what? I'm going to try it with this truck. I'm not asking y'all if I can sell it yet in three years. Whoever's sitting in here, while well, it's still got low miles, I'm going to put it up for bid and let's see what happens with it. Because in my opinion, we're losing the big boat if you go buy. I think this truck in three years will bring within three to $4,000 of what it costs you. So for $1,000 a year, you can keep a new vehicle on the road transporting prisoners. And it pretty well not be a financial uh, restraint as opposed to running it to death and having a vehicle that's worth nothing and having to come up with 28000 the so, chrome patch package that you're talking about adding is for it's almost a thousand dollars you've the it expected when you trade it it'll increase the value yes, quite that, a bit is why i mean uh, it's i'm not a big vehicle guru and the judge is exactly right uh the last couple of years i've been looking into trying to do this and i know we can't do it with our whole fleet so we're going to do it we're going to do an experiment with one vehicle but what i've been told by people that do know about vehicles that if you add that option at a resale, you'll get double to triple that. So uh, their opinion is if my object is to sell this vehicle in three years and try to get good money out of it, I should put that option on there. So, uh, so the total price of the truck with that option is uh, 28299 or I'm sorry, 28249 And that beats the state price just for comparison by fifty dollars so uh any questions about the trucks uh and then just for the record and we've already ordered this vehicle we ordered a ford fusion and we uh got that from hunt forward the reason you're just now hearing about that it was under twenty thousand under twenty thousand we can go ahead and place an order and because uh, you'd already given me approval to use this is coming out of the same money we've already spoken about and why am i buying a ford fusion just so you'll know that again is for long-term savings we have lots of things when we send somebody to the academy they don't need a marked vehicle to go up to the academy it's good to have an unmarked just basic vehicle that's got a radio in it also uh last week we went to vehicle inspection school there were four of us we had to take two vehicles because everything's got a cage in it. You're locking people down. This will not, so we could have taken that vehicle. And every mile that we keep off of our expensive vehicles, and when I say an expensive vehicle, Marty's exactly right. You know, buying the vehicle is just part of it. There's another six, seven thousand dollars of lights and all that stuff that gets put in these. So if we can use that to serve some papers in, do this, do that in. We're keeping miles off our more expensive vehicles, which in the long run is going to do us well. So, uh, letting you know about that one. Any questions about those? How much did you spend bidding? Uh, did you have to advertise on all these? Did what, sir? Have to advertise. Pam could answer that. Yes. What does that, what does that cost you? I don't know, Pam, what that ad we ran to advertise for these was about $150, $200? No, probably like 50 you know. Right? Okay. Keiko conference last week. They're on. They're trying to get it changed to thirty thousand from twenty to thirty. 
That would be so that would be like nice. advertising you do just like on infusion. Because it it takes a lot longer to be able to do all that. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, again, this is just for y'all's knowledge. I have $115,000 to work with. The four vehicles that I'm going to order, one's already been ordered, are going to run $96,114. That's going to leave me $18,886 to work with on putting likes and stuff like that in. Keep in mind, order them doesn't get them here. This could be six months from now before they come in or anything else. So, But that's where we're at. Any other questions about that? I've got two other things to talk to you about that are unrelated to this, but if you're all ready to move on, we're good. We need a motion or anything? I don't think so. It's already, we've already approved. I mean, do we just have to acknowledge that? Because we put it out okay, there, yeah, but now, now we got a bid. Yeah, think. we need a motion to accept it. Just, it's cleaner it. that way. Right, so I'm going to be reading read through these figures just so you've got them for the motion. The Dodge uh, truck's going to be 28249 Each Dodge Cruiser is 24943 which would be two for 49886 And there's one Ford Fusion for $17,979. And those are ordering three of those from our local dealership, Hunt Dodge. So this motion should actually be to accept these bids with the stipulations that you mentioned the reasons for not taking the order. Yes, ma'am. I need a motion to accept the bids from Hunt Dodge as best value bids on the sheriff's vehicles. That sounds good. Still like the motion. Mr. Chandler made a motion. Need a second. Mr. Randolph, second. Martin Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Bobby Bush. Yes. Blake Charlton. Yes. General Spears. Yes. What else you got, Sheriff? Uh, the second thing, we recently, I know we just talked about vehicles. This involves vehicles, but it's a totally different uh, situation. We recently had an accident. I can't go into details of that unless we're going to private session because it's an ongoing deal. But we told the vehicle out, just so y'all know. Uh, fortunately, it was the, one of the oldest vehicles we had. It was a 2011 Dodge Charger. It was one of our road units. Had 148,000 miles on it. Uh, the adjuster was over there this morning. He's going to declare it totaled. I've still got to call him and find out uh, what's going on. That vehicle is going to need to be replaced at some point in the future. We're not in a rush right now because we're ordering these others. What I'd ask this court to allow us to do is to take the insurance settlement that's done with this vehicle. It'll be given to the general fund, and then I would like it to go from the general fund into our line item for vehicles so that we can look at replacing it down the road. I'm not asking for any additional revenues. I'm just saying whatever the insurance guy gives us for that vehicle, I'd like that put back in our line item so that I've got something to work with in looking at replacing that. I'm fine with that. I won't say that. You, how much do you think you're going to get out of that? Oh, Book value on it, $7,500. we have got a $1,000 deductible, so it may be $6,500. That's what I was thinking. It won't, it won't be much money. Yeah. I mean, but, but it gives me something to work with. It, I mean, if we had surplus, that vehicle Probably. and sold it, and I mean that's the, where the money would have gone anyway. Right. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm fine. yeah I'm, I need a motion to um, put the the insurance settlement in the sheriff's line item for vehicles. Yes. So that take care of the code. Second. A motion by Mr. Bush and a second by Mr. Tarp. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. James Spears. Yes. And uh, we're good to move on to the third item. This is the last item I've got. Promise. I, I promise. <laughs> Unless you guys have a bunch of questions, you know I'll talk. If you ask me questions, I'll go off. Stop talk, talking all day long. Uh, I've got a detective that's fixing to retire, uh, Eddie Lawson. 
what is normal to do in those situations, and we really don't get a lot of people that work all the way up to retirement, is as a gift from the sheriff's office to give them their service weapon. What most agencies do and what we're going to do at the sheriff's office is the people are going to dig into their pockets and we're going to come up with the money for the service weapon and we're going to buy it from the county, present it to him. What I'm asking you gentlemen to approve this morning is uh, one, the price of the weapon we've determined to be $340. It's a used weapon. Uh, I had my firearms uh, trainer and Detective Winchester, Sergeant Winchester, who's also very knowledgeable on guns. They did check it around. A used gun like Eddie's is $340. We're gonna raise that ourselves, but again, kind of like we were just talking, what I'd like to do, since we're coming up with money to buy the gun, I'm gonna to have to replace that gun at some point in time when there's a, a new unit hired. I'd like to turn that over to fiscal courts, general fund, but get pre-approval that when they get that, to turn around and put it in my uh, law enforcement supply budget so that I've got that to work with and buy a new gun. The money's coming out of our pocket. That's, the 340 you're giving us back is, I'm digging in and handing you basically. How, how would you put that in uh, as far as a source of uh, revenue? Uh, the revenue will be to the general fund, like miscellaneous, and then okay. of course, I don't know. I was just wondering how she was going yeah, to Yeah, no, no, no. That's, what, uh, that's the way it, it seems like a bunch of hoops to jump through, but technically to do it the right way, that's the way right. we're supposed so to do it. So I think for auditing purposes, that's pro I know you're going to, as you say, jump through a bunch of hoops. I certainly, it's not, I've been around not as long as some, but I've been around long enough to know that it is not uncommon for a retiring officer to get a service weapon and so I, I think this is probably the best way to handle that I need a motion to accept the three hundred and forty dollars into miscellaneous funds and to be transferred into the sheriff's line item for law enforcement supplies so move second I've got a motion by Mr. Tarpley and a second by Mr. Bush Parkley and Mr. Bush. Thank you. Clay Tarkley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Marty Chandler? Yes. Larry Randolph? Yes. James Shears? Yes. Thank you, Sheriff. I got one thing. Yes. Since uh, I'm going to be the only returning member of this court <laughs> after January 1, I would like to, as soon as possible, hopefully by the next court meeting, do you, how close are you going to preparing your next year's budget? No, oh, we're not even close. Well, we have to have that approved by like January 15th. Yeah, and we're not to Thanksgiving yet, but no. I'm not being smart. I, I know, I know, but I focus on taxes during the month of October and the first part of November, and then about this time is when I start putting things together. Y'all can come talk to me, any of you can come talk to me anytime you want to. By January, I'll have a, a budget. But I'm starting to get ideas, but uh, no, it's not prepared at this point in time. Okay, as, I was going to ask Bill Lane, like, as soon as you can get that, as close to January, the end of December, if you can get it done, or myself as a new <coughs> judge, sure. can I be looking that over? Part, really part of my focus at this part of the year, uh, remember, I'm asked to work off two budget. I, I'm presenting a budget in the calendar year and working off of it. So I'm trying to balance two here at the end of the year to make sure I figure But I think everything's going to be good. But yes, long story short, be working on it. Should have it done by December 1st, maybe a little bit later or something. Okay. All right. All right. I, I just wanted to throw that out. I didn't want to. Sure. Know, wouldn't, wouldn't say and get it to me tomorrow or anything. I just as soon as this year, have it, if we can get it a little sooner than what we've been getting in the past, it just because there is so many new ones coming out. That's, sure. That's all reason I asked the same with both of you. Okay. The next, uh, Chad, do you have, um, we've got a, a request for additional funds for the, the jail's vehicle equipment. 
think that was the nine. We brought another check over here. Right. Um, to put in there what it was. There's there was no lights on the side of the truck and we changed the cage up a little bit, which was an additional cost and the lights on the side of the truck was an additional cost, but the for the band four we're not asking for any money for you guys. <coughs> So, I mean, I, I don't know. The court probably not aware. They, the at the last meeting, they presented their their figures on the the new jail vehicle, and um, and then I guess you all did some additions to it uh, or it changes. Was, it was an additional nine hundred sixty three dollars on the equipment of the truck. And you're and paying for that out of commissary. We yes we. Yeah, we brought the already brought the check over here before that. Okay. So we just need an approval to accept that money out of commissary? Uh, well, I mean, we probably just need to, with the amendment, we probably just need to have exact figures because we don't want to have to go into that vehicle and equipment on that last meeting. We probably just need to um, revise those amounts because the, the equipment amount is going to change. The vehicle still remains the same at $28,639 and the equipment adding on the 963 brings it to $6,074.10. So we can just reflect that. It's that extra 963 on the vehicle equipment. So it's an additional 930. What? 963. It's $963. <laughs> I don't know. How much was that truck? $28,639 is the vehicle itself. And that is the contract. And that is the amount you all heard the last meeting. That's state that's that's not bid through the, that's state contract price and that's getting and that's getting it from uh, Freedom Dodge and Lexington. Yes. The only thing changing is the equipment, just adding an extra one because an extra, an, an extra check was brought from the commissary. Um, check brought that this week. So, but since we had specific numbers at the last meeting when purchasing this vehicle, we need to just revise those numbers so, to add in that extra 963. I would say next time we might all bid it out. Well, I think Hunt Ford beat it, or Hunt Dodge beat it by, or state contract price by about eight hundred dollars on this one. So, but it's that's already been approved. We had we had orders that truck. Yet we were waiting for everything to get approved. So I mean, there's something we could probably look at. Well, I mean, I'm not sure if you can. I mean, we've already approved for it to be purchased and the amount through the state contract. So and I think that's- Then you'd have to go back up and send out bids and- Yeah. I was just saying in the future, it might be something to think about before you, uh, is to, to go ahead and get it bid out. And I just need a motion to approve the additional uh, $963 out of commissary. Go ahead. Just a before we do that, if you have an order truck, all we've got to do is rescind our motion and they can bid it up. And that'll take a couple of weeks, then you can go with this bid here and save a thousand dollars. Is there anything wrong with that, Sam? No, other than the fact that you lose time and time is money, but I mean I, I it they can do what they want, but you're gonna have to undo what you did and start over again and they're gonna have to Yes, Sheriff. Hey, uh, just for clarification, I'm not getting in the middle of the office business. They need state contract. The eight hundred dollars is what Gilly Hyde. We beat Gilly Hyde over taking that on. And they did beat the state contract price, but it was about like fifty dollars. Oh. It, it wasn't eight hundred. It was a small amount, but. I was just, well, I mean, I'm not sure about the specifics on the chrome package and so forth. I know without the chrome package, the, the Hunt Ford or Hunt Dodge bid is 27500 something. But anyway, I'm not, I think that would have to be a request that would come from the jail 
to come back and rescind the original. Uh, yeah, I don't think and we've, we've already make, make yeah. them do it. It's already been approved. That's my thing. We've already done it. And I don't think it'd be a thousand dollars difference in it. It would be if you compared to Gilly Hyde. And you're going to have a, you're going to have a couple of hundred dollars in the bid process and advertising and stuff too. I say so. I, I, I like the judges. In the future, you might want to look at bidding, but on this one, I, we, let's just let them add the 963 out of commissary and move along with it. All right, I need a motion to accept the 963 dollars. From commissary into the general into the jail. Got got Bush. Bush. By by Bush. Bush. Second. Second by Mr. Tarpley. Bush and Tarpley. Call me Bush. Yes. Blake Tarpley. Yes. Larry Bush. Yes. Jeff Randolph. Yes. Martin Chandler. Yes. James Spears. Yes. Next, we need to review and approve first reading of budget, budget amendment 220.20. Oh. I see we're bringing in 180, and another one, 180 from the city and a local agreement, 180 from the surplus from the prior year. But did we decide just to pay for that car truck outright? Um, we had, you don't. This court does not have to decide today to pay for the fire truck outright. We do have to have it in the budget and under a line item for the upcoming budget for that truck to be ordered and have a PO. The, the, the fire truck manufacturer does not require the PO, but our audit, the, the, our auditing does require us to have a PO. So we have to have that in a line item and have to show where the funds have been transferred. It's not a cash transfer. Yeah, that adjusted based on what you Yeah. So it, it's it's not we're not doing a cash transfer from the surplus. It's a just a, a line item budget transfer to show that we have the money available for that line item. And then all the rest of that uh, in that <coughs> in that budget transfer is the money from the surplus auction and from commissary into the jail vehicles. Well, it's got jail personnel. Yeah, we we made it. We, you all authorized the transfer at the last meeting from personnel to the vehicle and the equipment. Okay. So we, we did that. Okay. Yeah. But as far as the amendment, since we did get the money, the amendment is amending that money back in to replenish that personnel fund. Okay. So and then the uh, the adjusted surplus for prior year or reserve from and reserve from transfers for fifteen thousand um, dollars. We had roughly twenty five thousand. We had several here lately. I mean, the continual. Um, we had a lightning strike again at the beginning of this year that um, insurance clients were trying to get out of the sky. So just several drug task force. You know, it's just odds and things here that they come out of the court where we've been moving money. Right. So and we always just like to keep that reserve um, account just in case we have those types of things to come up. So. so basically the reserve account that we had in the original budget for just for some miscellaneous thing, you know, we've we've depleted it quite a bit with <coughs> drug task force, the the training pad. Soil conservation, all these things. That was kind of anticipation of that, and so that fifteen. And you all need to consider too uh, the soil conservation that you all just did. That fourteen thousand would need to be included in this amendment as well for the prior year surplus. I would, I would say that. So we need to we need to change this amendment from four hundred and eleven thousand to four hundred twenty-five six thousand or twenty-five thousand. If that's where you all choose to pay for it, I mean that's not. So we need to have a motion and a second to approve an amended amendment. Well, we haven't approved it yet, so you can just tack it on. Okay. 
We can't wait. What we need is a motion. First, yeah, I mean, basically, it's a first, first reading. reading. Okay. So to approve the first call. reading with the addition of 50. With, Get, I guess the adjusted sur what's, surplus what's the exact number? Should be, could be 30,000. So it's 14,000 above. The revenue. All right. It's going to be the. the would the adjusted surplus value be twenty nine thousand instead of fifteen thousand? Could you do it that way? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we'll add a total line item. There'll be another line item underneath the fifteen thousand that adjusted surplus value for fourteen thousand. Okay. And then it'll be a matching line item for the other line that will be to the soil conservation of fourteen thousand. Okay. So it'll be fourteen of even on both both ends of the revenue expense. Right. So I need. I got I need Correct. I need a motion and a second to approve budget amendment number two two twenty point two oh oh in the amount of four hundred and twenty five thousand three hundred and forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents. Eighty nine cents. Eighty nine cents. Oh, I my glasses aren't working very good. Right. Okay. Bobby. Like a motion by Mr. Tarpley, a second by Mr. Bush. Yes. Yes. Marty Chandler. Yes. Larry Randolph. Yes. James Spears. Yes. Anybody else ask for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> we better just keep being quiet. Don't wake up, Bobby. <laughs> All right. Next on the regular business, we need to review and approve the amended, supplemented, and restated grant contracts between the industrial parks and the industrial authority, uh, or and the county and the industrial authority. And basically, what this is is um, with the state audit going on right now, um, the auditor has basically said that we need to clean up the, our agreements with the industrial authority on the industrial parks. Not that there was anything wrong with the agreements, but that they were not stated clearly in our contracts and our agreements with the industrial park, or with the industrial authority. Um, one of them is our, our current deal with the industrial authority in the Sanders Park and the Henderson Park is that new revenues from those industries in those parks, the industrial authority gets 80% of the, the occupational tax revenue and the county gets 20%. On two of those industries, on tractor supply in the east park and Fritz Winter in the north park, since the industri industrial authority supplied the land for those two facilities, the county has agreed to forego the quarter, the three quarter percent or the 20 percent of our occupational tax to the industrial authority to help pay for, pay them back for that land. So in other words, on tractor supply and Fritz Winter, the industrial authority gets 100 percent of the occupational tax, the three quarters of a percent from the county to reimburse them for the purchase of that land for those industries when they pay off. Both of those, the land value on both of those are close to $2 million. It's not going to be done in any of our terms. So, <laughs> but, but basically our 20% our goes to pay off the land at the tractor supply in Fritz Winter. And that's, that's clearly stated in these new agreements, and we just need to, they're not new agreements. It's just, it's, it's a agreement to be on file now. Like it is what's currently, how yes. all the, right. um, everything's been issued out. That's how it's been done ever since we've had Fred's and DSC, so. I know I'm getting old and senile, but I do not remember the court taking that action. I don't, I don't either. Sure. 
auditors or any action in the minutes that said that we were going to give them 100%. That's the reason the auditors are asking about it. I don't know if you all, if anything was discussed elsewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I don't recall us this being done. Of course, as you all know, I don't go to the industrial authority meetings. That's usually handled by my city counterpart because most of the stuff is done in the city. And so I, 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 that's why I called, the judge sent this to me, and that's why I called and asked him because I was not familiar with this. And so, as I said, if there was an agreement made with the industrial authority, as I said, I don't, I don't think we ever did that in, in, this, in this meeting in this city. So I think I mean, that's true, and I think that's why the auditors have, have basically come. And so the ones that don't remember it, if they weren't on the industrial authority in those negotiations, that's why you don't remember it. I guess here's my opinion. Since the four of us are going to be gone, I don't think we ought to take action on this and let the new court decide what they want to do. Well, that's my that, opinion. The thing of it is, if the auditors are, I would like to see the agreement because I don't remember it either. This uh, is the agreement. I mean, it, this is what the industrial, I mean, what's in your um, portal uh, on your, it is the agreement as, as it has been with the industrial authority and the county. I, and I, I mean, I wasn't here when this agreement was made either. So you I was, and I don't remember. Okay. But, so you've been taking 100 percent of the occupational tax from Fritz Winter and TSC and paying it to the industrial authority. Yes, as I've been told, that's how I was told to do the first year. You've been doing this ever since they've opened. Ever since I guess they were in operation. So. So were you told? So apparently, we've been there. were you told by the county judge executive or by? The, yes. Okay. Yes. His previous one. If it's delayed till January, is the auditor going to slap no, our wrist? She, she just suggested that um, you know she'll provide her recommendations when she's done, and then they can be decided upon. Well, here's the thing, Mary. Why would you want to dump this on new court members when this is something that we've all been doing, and they have? They sure enough won't have any idea why why it's been done in the past. So, but I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember doing. I think it was a verbal agreement. I don't think it was ever brought before the court that I remember. Well, I mean, my suggestion for this court would be to, to take a stance on it, yay or nay, right now. I mean, I, I mean that's it's, it's my opinion that the, this this agreement, I know the, the agreement with the industrial authority, I think in the future should be revisited as far as the percentages and everything. But I do think there was an agreement made between the previous county judge, the industrial authority, and these industries to attract these industries by basically their, the county was gonna help them pay for the land. Oh, I remember that discussion, but I don't ever remember the Haiti. 80 versus 100 ever being discussed. Would you, could we just table this to the next meeting and have Danny Griffin come at the next board meeting? I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Take two. That way he can answer some and that's, questions. Let's, I'm on, we just won't take any action today. And if you don't mind, put it on the next meeting's agenda and invite Danny to come and try to illuminate. And, and, and you know, if, if if Jim made an agreement with him, I'm, I'm and I'm sure he did. But I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying. If he told you, I'm sure he did. It's just it, it wouldn't hurt to have him here. And so, was my suggestion based on the consensus, so we can move on respectfully, is that we table this till we get Danny here to let. Let him answer some questions and try it because right now we're we're swapping ignorances, right. and, and and I I'm, that that's my take on it. Just wait and get some more information before you make a decision. All right. How much money are we talking about, Nicole, on a monthly annual basis? Um, I'll have to look. I'm not exactly sure. There's a lot of figures on that spreadsheet. Let's see. Twenty five thousand. 
think I've looked at the Fritz Winter deal, and, and of course they're in their phase one. I mean, they're going to expand quite a bit, but um, I think their total was like 60000 A year? Yeah. Probably well, we get that number before the next meeting. You, you all Let's move on to the financial report. Need to review and approve the budget transfers. Make a motion we approve. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Randolph and a second by Mr. Bush. Yes. Next, I need to review and approve the bills and claims. There's a couple of things that will stick out to you a little bit. There's uh, some uh, fire hydrant um, expenses down there. That's that's from the $7,700 grant money that we. We get pretty much every year. That's that's the majority of that's in and out money. So but we approve the claims. Second. Motion by Mr. Tarpley and a second by Mr. Bush. Glenn Tarpley? Yes. Bobby Bush? Yes. Martin Chandler? Yes. Mary Randolph? Yes. James Peters? Yes. Uh, do we have any reports? Uh, I don't have anything today from the magistrates. We have always in the past taken the uh, county road department members out and paid for their, bought their breakfast for them. Uh, do y'all have an idea what meeting, when y'all like to do that next month? Mm, no, I think something we can, we can discuss about scheduling it, trying yeah. to get it scheduled. Yeah. We usually do it before a court meeting. Right. And I think we have two left. Yeah. So it will be, uh, and Bobby said it might matter to December the, Fifth or the fourth or the eighteenth. We we'll have breakfast and lunch at night if you want. To. I usually eat at least twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to do that on the fourth? Let them pick where they go. On the fourth. Yeah. Suits me. Suits me. Yes. Bobby, you want to pick where you want to go? Let us know. Same, you got anything? A couple of three things. Number one is, um, uh, unfortunately, the prepayment period is over. Now your ad valorem county taxes are due at face value through the end of December. Please, with sugar on top, I'm asking nicely, pay them before the end of the year, because after that, bad things start happening. They start adding penalties and interest and fees and it just gets more and more expensive. And while I, you know, I do get a commission for paying, you know, collecting delinquent ones, I'd rather make a little less money and the taxpayers keep a little more in their pockets. So uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, I told Bobby this morning that finally got, uh, a while back, we had a school bus turnaround, finally got it done. And we, Hard Castles came in and signed off on the temporary easement for construction road improvement. So that's done. Uh, hopefully get that recorded today. Uh, there's also a turnaround issue uh, up at Oak Ridge. One of the deeds, there's two deeds that have to be done. I've got one prepared and it's been, I've con sent it out to contact 
the landowner or property owner and he's supposed to come in and sign and then the other one I've got a rough draft on it and I just need some additional information I've got a line on someone who can help me track down the sort I've got to, but I need to make sure the source is right so people in the future can look at it don't let her leave here I've already had that conversation I wasn't going to mention any names judge I didn't mention any names either I'm just saying <laughs> I, but anyway, what I'm saying is, I get some information, I want to make sure I got it right the first time, and once that's done, I can go on and have that one ready to go as well. Um, and I'm supposed to be getting, I got a promise from the appraiser to get the thing on the uh, barn school. Once I get that, we can go. They had a very good meeting with folks, and we can do something on that. Maybe are they still available to one in Florida? Or is what, what they're going to do is, is they're going to probably offer, once we get a, because we can't pay more than what the appraisal says, we're going to make an offer to them. And at least as long as we get one of the three to sign off an agreement and we can get their third interest, then we can get, immediately they can get signed right of entry and we can go in right away and then the others we can do at our, at our leisure. But that's, sorry, that's, I don't usually have that many reports, but I want to get those in. That's fine. And I think, Mr. Taylor, do you have something to add? <coughs> Hopefully it's money. Yes, it actually is. Uh, as you know, my time as PBA is drawing to a close, and I wanted to bring some good budgetary news to the county. Uh, the budget of the PVA office is separate entirely from the county government. However, the state law statute does require that appropriation be made from the county to the PVA office. And that's basically a $50,000 fee plus some smaller numbers uh, for like a state conference meeting and the PVA bond. Those two items are together using around $500. There's also a requirement due to a Attorney General opinion made many years ago that the telephone service also has to be paid for by the county government if it's not directly supplied by them. Historically, that cost has been running about $500 a month, which means the line item when the bill comes to the county each year is $6,000. Uh, and that process was started back in March where the state sets the foundation for what the fees are gonna be for the next fiscal year. We have been able to uh, reduce those costs significantly. And instead of 500 a month bill that's been historically running, we're now down to about 130 a month. And that will translate into next fiscal year's budget process, about $4,000 less that will be due to the PBA office, PBA office from the county, county budget. It'll be a wash for us because our bills will be lower, so we'll get a lower reimbursement to offset that. So will come out about even. However, uh, the fiscal court should come out about $4,000 to the good, and you can spend that money on whatever great projects that you have have lined up. So I just want to bring you some good budget news as opposed to asking for more money. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bobby, uh, Les, anybody got anything else? Talking about the farm school projects. The back in the summer we gave us the way for the water district to do their relocation. And I, I know there's some questions back to be about funding that, but the water district is getting ready to move that line. So and uh, how quick do you think that's like, like in this week or yeah. Uh, now, the, the, the second degree, though, they're, we're furnishing the material and they're furnishing the labor. Right. So that will cut the cost. But. The, the issue with, with this whole, the barn school project right now is that it was about 18 months ago or a little longer when the original estimate from uh, Arnold Engineering was done on the cost of that bridge. Um, as we've moved through this process this year with the 80-20 money from the state and 
and that program is over too. That that's a program that no longer exists in as of the new budget from the state. Um, that our bid on just the concrete work on that bridge was two hundred thousand dollars higher than they had estimated. Um, so currently we're about two hundred thousand dollars short on on what we had budgeted for that project. Um, I've been in contact and written a letter to the, the state um, transportation cabinet uh, and they are working to try to come up with some extra funds. To, so if, if, if anybody wants to call their, their legislators and, and see if they can help push this a little bit, uh, anything, you know, as, as we've seen, there's not a whole lot of extra money in the budget, and there's surely not two hundred thousand dollars sitting around that we hadn't figured on. So, if the state could help us with some more extra funds, then um, and, and kind of my argument on going ahead and doing it, it you know, th these these low water crossings eventually all have to be fixed and replaced. I mean, they they, they fail over time, and it, if if we don't go ahead and do this project now, we're not going to get the 80-20 money, more than likely. Uh, well, I met with the commissioner last week at the GACO conference. There's still the 80-20 project money, but the thing of it is, it maxes out at 80000 That never was a program that was designed to put in a bridge like this. But the counties over the years figured out that you could not do it for two or three years and that money would roll over. And then you can you have enough money to do the big projects. Well, they've the state seen how much money was laying there, so they've cut that out. It's not a rollover every year. No. If we hadn't already had an MOA and we hadn't already had estimates on this project, we wouldn't have got the money for this project because they wouldn't let the money roll over. But the commissioner's coming down there to the first year and he's gonna meet with me and we're gonna go out and look at that project and a couple others that I'd like for him to look at and he, he is trying to find a place to get them to get 200,000, but he couldn't guarantee it. But he he said, with well, a project already started like this and the circumstances it's right. under, he thinks he might be able to do it. And I talked to you the other day to ask, could we pull out the 3% emergency bridge money or emergency fund money that we would put that in? I haven't got an answer to that yet, but that's, that's an area we might be able to pull some money out of that. Because we pay three percent in every year, so we might be able to do that to help with this project, right. you know, one-time deal. So, well, I mean, I think there's been engineering done. I mean, we've got considerable attorney fees in land acquisitions, and we've got, um, you know, we've got the, the the water department ready to move the water lines, and on and this, and if we if we have to completely abort this mission right now, and then come back and revisit it five years later. It's apt to cost two or three times as much money then. Um, so it's something, you know. Well, it costs a lot more because we don't use that money, we're going to lose that money. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. The state's going to pull it from us, so it would cost a whole 500000 or whatever instead of that. Right. So it's something to think about. Uh, we'll Hopefully we can get some extra money secured from the state. But, man, I think we need to find some way to make that happen right now. So. If we don't have anything further, I need a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mr. Randolph and Mr. Bush. Aye. Aye. Aye.